So this is Joe Keefe. I'm here with Maritime Reporter TV, and we're here with Cole Cosgrove, Vice President of Global Ship Management for Crowley. How are you doing today? Good, Joe. How are you? I can't complain. It's a beautiful ship. We're on board the El Coqui. Give us a sense of what these vessels really mean to Crowley and to uh, your customers. So the, well, the Conros were called the commitment class for a reason. Crowley's been servicing the Puerto Rico market for over 60 years with our tugs and barges. And uh, the, uh, I think the market really, uh, really wanted to see a, a shift in, uh, in the speed to market, which is one of the things our logistics company is very proud of. So these, uh, these ships and the, uh, the investments that we've made in the terminals there uh, are our next uh, generation of commitment to the folks of Puerto Rico, speeding the supply chain, getting the, uh, getting the, the materials there that they need as fast as we can. You're talking about, I hear the word velocity a lot. I hear speed of delivery. Um, how, how much faster are we moving cargo uh, to the island right now, as opposed to what we were doing before in the previous model, before the ships came along? Well, our, our previous service with the tugs and barges and actually the service that we continue to run for our specialized cargo, out of gauge, oversize, heavy lift cargo, uh, taken on the tugs and barges is about five and a half days from here to uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, these ships do the uh, do the same transit in 54 hours, so just a little over two days. Why having the uh, the ship management group involved with this and operating this ship brings value to the customers? L uh, lead us along there. So one of the concepts that uh, that we that uh, was developed with the uh, with the consolidation of the business lines. Uh, particularly Crowley Shipping, was to take advantage of the vast amount of experience that Crowley had within the company um, by bringing together all of the expertise that we had within shipping into one group. It allows us, uh, the, it allows us to, to share lessons learned. It allows us to, uh, to get best practices implemented much quicker across the corporation. Uh, and we find out that uh, the communication and the speed of being able to get things implemented is much quicker. So safe and reliable operations is, is always a key factor in, in ship operations. We do it for ourselves as well as the customers who we manage vessels for. And uh, that was a key component in trying to, in putting the shipping group together and, and bringing all that experience into one business line. When we talk about LNG, there's business reasons to do it, and there's also environmental reasons to do it. Crowley on the, on the tug and barge side has always used uh, ULSD. So we've always used the cleanest fuel here, uh, just based on the uh, the selection of uh, transport that we had. But uh, in terms of the um, the the uh, delivery of the other two LNG fueled ships, as well as the Coqui and the Taino, um, and the and the implementation of LNG, I'd say we well it, from our perspective, we have reduced the uh, the carbon footprint on a per container basis by about 38 percent over our ULSD service. Um, and then just based on the, uh, the properties of LNG itself, we've knocked particulate matter down to zero uh, on the two ships. Uh, we've knocked uh, the, uh, the, the SOX down to zero and the NOX down about 92%. So it definitely is probably one of the cleanest services on a liner basis today that's running. I agree. Well, there's always fluctuation in the markets. Uh, the cost of LNG fluctuates with the cost of, of diesel as well. Uh, it is a, uh, it's, it's a byproduct of the production process. Um, so the, uh, so the, the, the capital costs uh, on the LNG side is really where the, the cost differential comes in. I'd say uh, just in thinking about it, the, uh, the cost on the, uh, to build an LNG ship uh, here in the United States is probably 20 to 25 percent more than a, you know, than a normally um, uh, either Bunker C or, uh, or IFO based uh, regular diesel vessel. Um, but uh, I think from a uh, from a, the first few months of, uh, of operation, I think we're, we're happy with where we are. It was a great decision. The decision that was made was always environmentally based first. Um, we wanted to be the uh, we wanted to be the market leader in bringing clean cargo to the uh, to the Puerto Rico service, and I think we accomplished the goal. So the introduction of these vessels, these modern vessels, clean vessels into the Puerto Rico trades, has moved cargo a lot faster. You can move a lot more, a lot quicker. The turnaround times have, have been shortened significantly. Uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, what extra capacity has been introduced to the market. Well, the, uh, so between the, uh, the, the two Conros, um, they will handle somewhere between 800 and 850 units. Uh, 
Uh, and I use units versus TEUs because we carry a, a, a quite a quite a variety of sizes within the domestic uh, within the domestic Jones Act trade. So we carry 20s, 40s, 45s, 53s. Um, so it's uh, it's much easier to talk about units. And then we also we have two sailings a week of the Conroe, and then we have a sailing uh, a week with our uh, existing uh, barges that uh, handle our specialty cargo for NIT out of gauge oversize uh, heavy lift cargo, uh, and that adds another 300 units a week. So between the uh, the three sailings, we've got about a capacity for about 1,900 units on a weekly basis. These vessels isn't aren't the only uh, uh, investments that Crowley's made in the region. You've got an incredible investment there in the terminal in Puerto Rico. What does that mean for the uh, the route itself and for the region? So, uh, and actually, that's a great point. There was uh, there was a lot of thought about how the uh, the service uh, was going to transition because Crowley was predominantly a row row company in the past. So we have uh, we've transitioned into uh, into a low low uh, mode of operation both here and in San Juan. Uh, so there was a lot of there was a lot of um, thought and planning placed into how we were going to handle the the uh, the speed that these ships will arrive uh, and versus what we had in our prior service. So there was uh, there was quite a bit of investment made in uh, in Puerto Rico over 150 million dollars into a new pier, three brand new. Uh, state-of-the-art uh, gantry cranes, uh, including a, a terminal operating system that allows us to get trucks in and out of the terminals much quicker than what we had in our original system. So there was uh, quite, a, quite a bit of investment that was in support of the Conroes, uh, and I would say all of it is, is operating flawlessly at this point. So I think the, uh, the trucking companies, the customers, the, uh, the ability to get uh, their cargo in and out of the terminal on a, on a very fast turnaround uh, in a lot of cases, less than 30 minutes, uh, I think, has, uh, has all just come together just as we planned it. In conjunction with the faster movement of cargo and more cargo at a more frequent basis, uh, that, that involves logistics, and I imagine your uh, terminal operating system has a lot to do with that. What are you using and uh, why, and what's it doing for you? Uh, well, there was, a quite a, there was quite a bit of uh, work put into updating the, uh, the terminal operating systems that we use. We partnered with a, uh, with a company called Tideworks. Um, and but that encompassed a, uh, a, a number of uh, additional changes. The uh, the terminals themselves, the layouts were completely changed. The footprints of the terminals were expanded to uh, to handle the additional volumes. Uh, there was tremendous amount of uh, gate automation that was put in uh, to allow faster uh, faster turn times for the uh, for the truckers and the customer pickups. Um, and then there was a, a tremendous amount of investment in in yard equipment. Uh, whether those are reach stackers or uh, hustlers for the uh, for the containers, uh, stevedoring chassis for quick on and offload, so there was uh, a lot of planning to uh, to support the uh, the quicker delivery of cargo from Jacksonville to Puerto Rico. So when we talk about uh, the trade to Puerto Rico and uh, we talk about the Tiano and the uh, El Coqui and Crowley's role in the entire route here. Uh, you really can't talk about all of that unless you talk about the Jones Act as well. And it can be a controversial issue. You're either on one side of it or the other. Why is Crowley and why is the Jones Act right for this trade? Well, I think it's important to uh, it's important to understand why the Jones Act was was put into place in the first place and what it does for us as a nation. Um, firstly, it's U.S. mariners on U.S. built vessels uh, owned by U.S. citizens. Um, that's a that's a great uh, that's a great segue into the uh, into the protection of those cargoes, the preference cargoes, um, the military cargoes that that uh, need to be taken in time in times of conflict. So there's a lot of great um, national security reasons why the Jones Act is valid. In terms of Puerto Rico, I think it provides the people access to the types of commodities and materials that everybody wants. Um, it's, uh, it's the closest place to, uh, to get those. Um, we're, we're, we're a great, uh, Jacksonville has always been a, uh, has always been a great partner with the island of Puerto Rico. Um, we, uh, we supply quick and reliable transportation, uh, in terms of, uh, regular supply and in terms of emergency supply. Um, I think the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Taino and the Elko Key today, uh, in most cases, uh, over 50% of our crew are Puerto Rican uh, natives, uh, so they're very proud of the service that they provide to the uh, to the islands. 
Um, and and we compete with the uh, with the international carriers that uh, that have the same rights to uh, to call Puerto Rico as we do. So there's been uh, there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of conversation about the competitiveness or the competitiveness of the cost of transportation on U.S. flag vessels versus foreign flag vessels. And I think uh, it's been shown a couple of times now that um, the cost of transportation here is is actually more economical than what they're getting in some of the services that they have on the uh, on the international vessels. So I, I, I think it's a uh, it's a uh, a service that uh, that carries its weight. Uh, we've made an investment in it to uh, to make it uh, better, I think, than a, than a lot of the international services that now call the island. And uh, we look forward to continuing to serve it. The recovery of the islands, uh, it, that's ongoing still. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how would you uh, characterize uh, what's happening over there right now and, and uh, where they are in terms of all of that? Well, the Puerto Rican people are definitely resilient. Uh, you, you have to give them credit for, uh, for some of the hardships that they've gone through and that they continue to struggle with. Um, but the island's coming back. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's great to see the, uh, it's great, it's great to see the, uh, the, the Puerto Rican mariners that we have on board here. Um, we, we, we get stories of, you know, of, of daily family accomplishments. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to, uh, it's hard for a lot of folks uh, who have not had to go through something as uh, as tragic as what they went through with Hurricane Maria, uh, in in terms of you know some folks just completely lost their lost everything that they had. Um, so rebuilding that from the ground up has uh, has been a long road. It's still ongoing. Uh, I'm I'm proud to say that uh, that that Crowley was a huge part of that, um, as well as all of the carriers that serve that island. Um, so um, I think. Uh, I think the the island's coming back. It's going to be stronger. It's going to be better, and uh, they're 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 making a great road to recovery. Great. So, finish up here. I just want to ask one broad question for you. It's uh, as an ex-mariner myself and a U.S. mariner. It's a pleasure to be on board a new build American ship. It wasn't always that way, and there seems to be coming quite a few coming off the ways now. Um, what's the one thing that What's one thing that you would say qu isn't quite obvious to everyone else? Uh, that is really an important part and maybe a difficult part of bringing in two ships as unique as this to a trade and uh, making it all run smoothly and bring it all together. Well, I think the most important thing in anything that we do in the maritime is about our people. Um, having folks that are willing to learn a brand new technology, go through a completely different set of training, learning new skills, and then applying those skills to run an efficient vessel safely uh, that is probably one of the most technologically advanced vessels out there today uh, is just something that I think the, uh, the entire organization and, the, and all the mariners themselves should be proud of. Great. Well, listen, I want to thank you for taking time out today and letting us on board the ship to see this beautiful vessel. And uh, uh, we look forward to many more years of it. Appreciate it. Thank you.